there's my girl. She's pretty in pink. <laughs> mm. She's got her soft, snuggly. We needed uh, it this morning. It's 54, 54 out here. Yeah. Come on, Pat. Let's go, buddy. That's it. Yes, my boy. Oh, comes here comes Marty. Marty. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to see Marty's doing normal after shots. Like oh, Gray, he... Gray doesn't do good with her shots. She always like is mopey, like fever, like doesn't do good. But Marty seems fine, so I'm relieved. This afternoon, we'll start with your eardrops, buddy. Oh, joy. <laughs> Everybody's doing good. Yep. Beep beep. beep beep. I got my paper. Aren't you cold? I'm actually a little chilly. That's okay, what I mean with the wind on the unicycle, I would no, think. No, I'm a little chilly. Okay. <laughs> All right, Stripey, you go for your morning walk, bud. Be a good boy. Hey, bud. The raccoon's been up here playing with my water bowl during the night. It's all right. Well, there's Stripe. I don't see a tux. That's what I was looking for, a tux. And I see somebody, orange kitty. Who is that? It is a kitty, right? Hi! Yeah, it's one of the orange kitties with shadows on their fur. Uh, I don't know where tux is. Hopefully there won't be an issue. <laughs> Jules is saying 57. Our arrival time is 7.30, which is okay. Hopefully it won't slip. Um, at the end of yesterday's video, I put some text that said Ruby's pickup time had been bumped up again. Uh, I think they said 11.30 today. Um, <laughs> Don says don't worry, they'll bump that one out too. Could be. I do know that um, I had Tesla five messages yesterday about windows down and doors open, and they were definitely doing something with Ruby. Um, I'm sure they'd like to fix her and get her out of there, make room for the next car as much as I'd like to have her back. So we'll play that by ear today. Um, I did not have an update about anything else that they tried or results or next steps. So, hopefully, if they bump it out again, I'll at least um, get some more juicy details about what's going on. Because inquiring minds, mine and yours, we all want to know, right? Let's see. Uh, we've been monitoring the forecast for Hurricane Ian. Those of us that live in the southeast in particular are really watching that storm. It's looking like it's going to hit Florida Tampa or north of Tampa and north of Tampa is not good for JB's house uh, Potentially so the farther south it hits The less impact to JB the farther north or probably the more impact and they're gonna get a ton of rain But Florida can handle the rain It's really it's really the storm surge for damage right at the shoreline and then um, You know the wind which they say it will lose some of its intensity as it approaches Florida which is great because it's probably going to be a three or a four and they're saying it might hit it a two but then the winds that are problematic will be a wider radius so it's a double-edged sword sort of um, anyway we'll be continuing to watch that the impacts coming in well I'm sure they'll be felt some on Wednesday, but the significant impacts on Thursday. And then accord, you know, of course, this is one of those systems where if it goes just a little bit farther west to our mountains, we won't get anywhere near the rain. And if it comes up Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, the center of the state, we could stand to get, you know, two, three, four inches of rain. So We'll be watching that. I, I think the highest wind I saw for our house is gusts in the 30s, which we have that from summer thunderstorms. So that could be, you know, small limbs down and a chance for uh, isolated power outage. But that is not a widespread issue for us. So, but we'll play it by ear. We're watching. We'll see. We've got that drive electric event on Saturday and. Um, you know, obviously that, that event won't work very well if it's pouring down rain, so 
Well, just playing that by ear, waiting to hear if, if uh, see where the rain really goes and how much of it there is and what the event organizers do with the Drive Electric event down in Fayetteville on Saturday. We'll keep you posted. Well, traffic's pretty thick coming into the city this morning. I um, went to merge back there to take the right fork and... Um, the guy in a red SUV, he was pretty determined that he did not want to let me over. But, um, you know, I signaled and powered ahead. <laughs> and he flew out from behind me. I don't know why he was being so uncooperative. Really don't. Like, let's work together in the morning, people. There's a car next to me this morning in the, um, lady that got out she went down to the tennis court and at least right now she's running laps you got to do what you got to do in the city I didn't wear my jacket in the car so it's kind of brisk out here this morning I do believe there are cameras on the tennis court, so I can sort of see why that might be a good place to go for a quick jog. Kind of boring, ton of times around the tennis court, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So I just brought up Ruby's <clears throat> Tesla Fi account on my phone, and they did take her for a 1.6 mile, nine minute drive loop yesterday. Um, it would be nice to know if calibration started or not. I think, you know, the feedback that I would want to give them is, number one, if you change the estimated pickup time, that ought to notify you in the Tesla app. And when they change that and they don't put in any text, you don't get notified. Number two, I think it ought to be required that if you change the pickup time, you have to put in a reason. Uh, that ought to be like a required field. Customers, you know, you need, like... Imagine if I didn't have an alternate car. I mean, like people need a backup plan or people want to know what to expect. They're calmer. I don't know. That's just feedback I would pass on. Um, so I don't know. I guess I would like to know is did the calibration start or are you still at the we can't get it to even start calibrating scenario. So um, I don't I don't know. But they did move her yesterday because I was a little worried about all they were saying that they needed to take apart in order to um, work on her, you know, it was just a little disconcerting, a little bit, um, a little bit concerning there, you know, how, so my car must have been put back together enough yesterday they could take her for a drive. I don't know, did they have to get into the penthouse or are they in the glove box? I don't know. She's some, um, but anyway, they drove her yesterday, so... I don't know. The pickup time is still listed as 11.30 this morning. Um, so, we'll see. We'll see what happens today. One of the things I was noticing is that the animation has the ability to tell if the brake light in front of it is high on the car or low on the car. So, this um, infinity over here it's low and this range rover over here it's high and jules is correctly showing where that is on all of these on all of these cars <laughs> of course she also thinks there's a guy peeking out from behind the uh, pickup truck over here and there's no person there is a vice mounted to the end of the bumper an orange vice and i guess that's um confusing the cameras the animation the processing there and what is that little orange thing <laughs> not only did the wipers come on but they actually cleaned the window it's quite startling when that happens and you didn't initiate it <laughs> I stopped for Pogo here at the Episcopal Church and um, they have knocked down the house across the street from the church which was run down and dilapidated and that was probably the right answer 
although they have not taken down this other building over here but um <clears throat> there's a new neighborhood that went in in that direction and i imagine they're going to put some houses on this land looks like they're going to leave the pretty trees along the road yay but um you know some property some houses up to the trees over there so but by all means take down the other dilapidated building too because its roof has fallen in and it's not in good shape Don and i are out on our walk we were a smidge late leaving there was an issue that came up at the nine o'clock conference call but hopefully it's going to rest until the 11 o'clock call looks like they mowed yesterday when on the trail when they got done up at the park so that's cool it's really nice out here this is one of those days you don't really want to miss because it's actually a pleasure to walk when it's like this we both have on a light jacket i'm starting to feel pretty hot though i'm here with marty and tux sitting in my spot have given marty his first eardrops um he did not have mites but he's got all this black goop and basically the vet had previously told me that he's had ear infections that were untreated before he showed up at my house and his ears are really swollen sort of closed permanently from scratching and untreated infection so he has a really small air passage into the ear and uh she told me last time we treated him uh, that it was unlikely that he, you know, he was probably going to be need treatment again because his ears, just the, the airway is just not going to stay dry. It's going to stay too moist. And anyway, poor guy, he's got to have eardrops in his ears twice a day for 14 days and they're refrigerated drops. So they're stinking cold. But we'll get him in there. He let me, but then he was sort of like, I don't know if I want to come near you again. I really hate doing stuff that makes him mad at me. But he's he's over it for right now, and he cares too much about his buddies and his friends, his friends and his food to go anywhere. He just might not want me to touch him for a few days. <laughs> uh, poor Marty. Poor mom. So they haven't changed Ruby's pickup time, and Ruby's currently charging think that could be a good sign I think I told you guys they did a short drive with her yesterday um, but I don't know if calibration for the right pillar camera started correctly now or not I know they didn't drive her enough to finish calibration but I guess they're under the assumption if it wouldn't even begin calibration if they can get it to start that it will finish I'd prefer that they finished it but um, this time if I bring her home and it and it doesn't calibrate correctly I'm not I'm just gonna show back up <laughs> and plead my case I think um but yeah maybe they're they're either charging her because she's got a hundred miles so she's not that low but they're either charging her because they're gonna go take her for a 30 mile drive or they're charging her because that's what they do when they can before you go pick the car up so we'll see well, Jules needs to be inspected, and we're running out of time, so I'm just going to wait. And if that impacts Guardian Angel or Whole Foods, that it just is what it is. There was no chiropractor's appointment today. Normally, I would be about at Apex now, so I'll have to pick what I'm going to do after I leave here, and that's fine. I'm sitting here uh, looking up at a pretty dogwood tree at the local church uh just across the street from where i got jules inspected i just moved out of the way so i could call Dawn. and um ruby's ready to come home um best as i understood it the frame around the b pillar camera was broken and there was an issue with the coaxial cable and they put in a coax bypass and then they fixed the coax um I'll put the little text up there. I mean, I under, I, I sort of get it, but, um, you know, the behind the scene thing, scene things is like, it seems like the camera was probably broke when they, that thing was broke in April, April after they replaced the camera since it never calibrated correctly after that, right? And then when they replaced the camera at the last service, maybe it just wasn't understood that that was broken. Um, it's probably been three techs, right? The one in April, the one last time, and the one this time, or at least the one in April and the one the last two times. I don't know. She's fixed. No charge. Ready to be picked up. Don says we can go now. 
So I'm gonna go home and grab Dawn and then go to Tesla and get Ruby. And Dawn said, if I really wanna go to Whole Foods or do some of my shopping stuff, he could pick up Johnny and take Johnny home and I could go to Whole Foods. So I'm gonna think about that. I do have the cooler in the back of Jules because I was planning on going. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna go get Dawn. We're gonna go get Ruby. I'm smiling, I get to pick up my car. I was gonna say, let's see if I can film Stripe before he gets down, but he come and do his mama. He, all the time, this dirt and the shape of this um, wood planter that Don built, he, he sleeps up here all the time. Um, two years in a row, the begonias came back. This year they didn't, and he sleeps up there so much, so I was like, why try to plant flowers there? <laughs> Hi. Hi. You're a good boy. So, some of you might remember a video a while ago where Don put the transponder for Jules somewhere under the front, inside the front grill area. And we thought it was working, but then we started getting um, bill by mail invoices for the few times that I drove Jules on the turnpike. We're on the turnpike right now, headed to Tesla. And um, see, Don's driving. Uh, so, a Don, uh, a little while ago, yeah, Jules is driving, he said, yeah, FSD beta. Um, so, a while ago, since we were getting these bill by mail, which means we're paying more for using the turnpike in this car, Don moved the transponder someplace else under the front inside the grill. And I don't think I documented that too much. I documented the first time he did it on video pretty good when he had the trunk out, that trunk out that makes for a good picture, um, a thumbnail. So... And it still wasn't working, we were getting billed by mail. Well, I've been on the phone with the turnpike people, which we've only been meaning to call for six or nine months now to try to straighten out the mess that Dawn created. <laughs> so if you have a special character in your license plate, you're not supposed to enter it. And he missed that if you have an O in your license plate, it's, a, it's supposed to be entered as a zero. And apparently they don't check what you enter against the valid DMV license plate. So the fact that Don entered the O as an O. As a correct spelling. As a correct spelling of more power um, meant that our license plate wasn't ma in their database wasn't matching the picture. And therefore, even though we had a transponder in the car, which we now don't know if it was working in the spots it was in or not. <laughs> oh god this is a, i was seriously on the phone for 30 minutes with not the dmv but the turnpike people and the girl was really helpful and great so to get don's zero uh, o converted to a zero requires a supervisor's review so they're gonna have to look at it and call me back they couldn't just fix it and then don had to go through a bunch of shenanigans to say that i'm allowed to talk for him the last thing we want don doing is trying to Right to fix this. That's my job. So anyway, it's all, it's sort of you know it's sort of sorted out. So we'll see. And then the GMC was orphaned on its own account. This is what happens when Don has to deal with technology. So he had two accounts, and he had you know they they take out twenty dollars. They keep it topped off so they can make interest on your money and deduct your fee. Or I guess they're from their perspective, they're trying to know in advance that. Um, a car just moved in front of Don and shouldn't have. Um, they, they're trying to make sure that they have the money so there's no way you won't pay them because you know they've got to have their turnpike fee. But anyway, um, hopefully it's going to get fixed now. I have the account. They moved the GMC over with Jules and Ruby and I have to go close out the other account and then they'll eventually, probably in three months, 90 days, send us the $20 they're holding on that other account and maybe we won't have any more problems. And, and for today, the transponder is up on the dash in Jules, but I suspect Don's gonna put it back in the frunk if we can A, prove the transponder's working and B, get the license plate fixed so we don't get any more of these bill by mail things coming. Um, so it's just the day to get crazy stuff handled. I think Don says he has something else now that I've gotten the car inspected, paid the registration and the property tax, which was $522. There's a few extra dollars in there for the vanity plate, but most of that was the property tax. Um, I think the general registration is only $20 and it's like another 20 or 30 for the vanity plate. 
they got to make their money somehow, right? Um, I think there's one other thing. I, I fixed the turnpike guy. I think there's one other thing that he wants me to fix. But I'm going to let him go downtown and grab Johnny. And I'm going to go to Whole Foods with Ruby. And um, hopefully Ruby's all good. And the rest of the day will be nice and smooth. Ruby. Yeah. That was fine, Ruby. I, I, he's telling Jules to find out. Oh, God. He's letting Jules drive. Don't let Jules drive into Tesla parking lot. We're letting him. Oh, that's not Ruby. Wrong wheels. Um, they did not give me a hint. There's Ruby. It is Ruby. I was going to say they did not. You said a good job, Jewel. <laughs> took you right to Ruby. <laughs> okay. Ruby has autopilot and everything seems to be in order. Um, I am here at Crabtree Valley Mall walking in, power walking into the Lego store. They do have the Halloween minifigures now. I'm so sorry about the background noise. Um, I won't be able to film in the mall, so I was just trying to let you know what was happening. Um, the B-pillar camera was not the glass that the camera's attached to. You know, that's one piece. It was not flush. So we asked Tesla to pull the car around, reseat it, um, which they did, and they did quickly, and all was good. How fun Legos as Hot Wheels. I guess it's a slightly competitive oh thing. my god look at how big i mean i knew it was big but look at how big that harry potter train is in comparison to the version i have wow the lighthouse is cool because you can light it up and make it move i like that a lot also well i did pick up two sets of the halloween minifigures and um you know, in the little cases, they already had them ready to go. I'll take a picture and pop it up here over the video. I tried to take a picture in the underground parking, and the figures weren't right in the clear plastic where you could see them, and the lighting was horrible, and the reflection was bad. I just, I'll do it when I get home, and I can open it up, and I won't be losing parts all over the floor. So, as I was trying to explain, and I was distracted because of the loud noise in the parking deck, um, the glass for the right pillar, B-pillar camera, was um, not seated properly on the car. It was uh, sticking out at the top, and I think Don took a picture, although it's one of those things that's hard to see in a picture, but in person or feeling it with your hands, you can see it. So. We asked them to pull Ruby around and try to reseat it, which they did, and it's now totally flush. So, and they did that really quick. And um, Don went to get Johnny, and I had stayed with Ruby, and then of course, you know, they brought Ruby back out to me. So, all is good, and so far, autopilot is good. And um, you know, if they say they got the camera to calibrate, I'm gonna go with we're all fixed. And after a couple of days, even one full day of driving and no alerts, I'll uh, stop thinking about it. So, but I think we're all good. And I'm headed to Whole Foods now. It's around three o'clock, so I didn't defrost anything for dinner today. It'd just be easier to pick up some steaks and go with that. Ruby's not really angled that much at that much of a degree, but I do press in on the uh, stalk to engage the extra strength on the parking brake. It's not actually an, an extra or separate brake, it's just more pressure applied. You hear this little squeaking sound when you push in. Just a tip for some owners that may not know that, that's not one of the more commonly um, talked about things. I do have to wonder though, I guess with the plaid and no uh, gear selector stock, how do you engage that on the plaid? I'm not going to buy any of it, but pumpkin spice, it's so tempting. They say a picture's worth a thousand words, probably a video too. So you push it in, drive, and then when you really push it in, listen. You can kind of hear us. And anyway, and then when you obviously when you put it in drive, it releases it. There's an Ionic 5 in the lot. But it was so crowded when I came out of the door, I wasn't really able to uh, stop.
Whoops. It's the last car here on the left, silver color. It has a very distinctive um, tail light in the back, so they're pretty easy to spot. So this person on the sidewalk over here running with the stroller, they crossed the street here. And I, I get that they needed a, uh, to cross from the sidewalk on the left to the sidewalk over here, but there's no crosswalk there. And some kind person stopped to let them cross except for the person behind them wasn't expecting that and tires squealed but no crashes occurred. It was close though. It was really close. You got to think when you're braking. I mean, I want to let people cross safely, and that's all good, but you got to make sure the guys behind you can stop. Phew. Well, Ruby's autopilot's been doing fine. I decided I turn the beta on when I go back out for Taekwondo later. So I just have regular navigate on autopilot and stop light, stop sign, stuff enabled. Uh, <clears throat> I had to re-remember how to engage autopilot and change the speed. <laughs> I was getting used to how it works in the Y. Going, I still prefer Ruby, but going back and forth between the two is a bit of a thing. One's all focused on the left side of the car in the X, and the other's all focused on the right side in the Y. Well, I don't have as much time as I'd like, but I'm going to fool with the castle for a few minutes. Um, it's this column over here I've got to fix up, and... Um, I am actually short these one by one dark tan so I can fix everything but that. <laughs> Every time I work on it, it looks better, but <laughs> I, I did order these, but I've still got to come back and tinker. And also, um, this really in between these two floors is not the right piece. There's four pieces that are wrong over there that I've got to swap out, but I am I'm out of time nighttime unless you want to fix it for me while I'm gone. <laughs> okay, sweetie, you're a good girl. Johnny and I have been at Taekwondo. I went inside to help the masters um, with the common app. They were kind enough to um, write a recommendation for Johnny, help them, um, you know, go through the process of uploading it and creating an account on the common app and that kind of thing. I just enabled full self-driving beta. We're going to drive home. Um, I'm feeling good about how things are looking. I'll let you know how it goes. All right, we're in the beta. So Jules does not like this intersection with the railroad crossing. Let's see what Ruby does. Um, Okay, I had to hit the accelerator there. She broke, she hit the brake pretty hard because of the um, side street. So I say Ruby handled it just like Jules did and not well. Not well, so. Whoops. It's a good thing if I accidentally hit the gear selector on the X to engage autopilot incorrectly that it just puts the car in drive when it's already in drive. Because <laughs> I did that again. I'm not used to it. So Ruby did well the rest of the way home. I forgot I had navigated. I just engaged autopilot coming down Main Street. And you know, she'll stay driving on the road she's on. Um, I'm like, why aren't you turning on the Wagstaff? It's because I didn't navigate home. Oops because I know how to go home, right? Um, she uh, went to stop for a pedestrian on the side of the road and they weren't actually wanting to cross. I really have a beef to pick with people that go near the pedestrian crosswalk without the intent of actually crossing. It's like pet the dog, talk to your friend, spin in a circle, take a drip of, drink of your coffee, but don't do it right at the entrance to the crosswalk because it confuses drivers and AI and... But I thought it was great she saw them off to the side and stop, was going to stop for them and then realized they weren't actually coming out and picked back up. And then there was a person getting out of their car on the street, you know, they're opening the driver's door parallel parked on the street. And I waited to see what she would do and she dipped out away from the car a little bit. She did. She saw the door opening and she went to move out of the way. So 
Um, she took the turn into the neighborhood and the turn onto our cul-de-sac about as unsmoothly as Jules does. It was pretty similar responses from the car, I think, between the two cars. So let's hope we're going to go all day tomorrow with no alerts, and then we will consider this 110% case closed.